Hey guys, I gotta turn this around. I'm out at the Santa Clara County Family Courthouse. And for anybody who's ever been watching my videos, you know that I have been covering this courthouse for a long time. And I've covered protests out here. I've covered people losing their children in custody battles. I've watched people losing their homes. And I don't cover the people who are involved in a divorce. I cover the judges, the lawyers, the court clerks, and the bailiffs. And we're gonna talk about that right now. Right now there's a process server up in that courthouse who is trying to serve a disqualification on a judge. And the court clerk yesterday refused to take that service. And that is a law that the court clerk has to take and file the document when a judge has served a disqualification. Now remember, this is the courthouse that cost $283 million to build. And they pay all the employees in there. And yet, they don't have enough money to keep the doors open. And they've been closing these courthouse doors and clerk's offices for a number of years. They also have stopped giving court reporters. But what happened earlier today is, actually we're gonna go back to yesterday, a process server went into Judge Towery's courtroom in Department 77. There's a disqualification that is gonna be filed on him. And judges end up getting disqualified from cases if they've done something wrong. And they have immunity just like police officers do, but they can get removed from a case if they don't make disclosures, they've engaged in bias, or they've done something wrong. Usually not following the law isn't one thing that can get them removed because judges are allowed to make mistakes. So this process server who is a Marine and veteran went up to serve in his off courtroom yesterday and Judge Towery, after four efforts, finally said he was refusing service. Today, he got drop served by the elevator. The veteran Marine found him and served him at the elevator. There's the Santa Clara County Sheriff's deputies. They don't like me filming them through the glass so they get a little salty about that. But just now the process server went to the court clerk's office, which is right back there. And they were told, he was told that he could not file the document in the clerk's office. It had to be filed in Judge Towery's courtroom. And so the court clerk, her name is Carla, and she has refused to file the document. That's a court clerk who by law is supposed to do something and she's not doing it. The judge, was forced to accept service and he's been served. And when the court process server went back up to the courtroom, sorry, I'm trying to film and talk out loud and think what's going on and I'm gonna let you know as soon as I find things out. But these sheriff's deputies really hate when I record through the glass. They shouldn't have built a courthouse full of glass if they didn't wanna be recorded in it. So the judge came into his courtroom today and the process server who had just served him went back to get the filed stamp copy and Judge Towery had the sheriff come and have him removed from his courtroom, is my understanding. And so he's still up there waiting to get the filed stamp copy and everybody seems to be wanting to refuse to do their jobs. So this is the Santa Clara Sheriff's deputies who are following judges' orders, but not necessarily the law. And we are documenting, this is a judge who was served with a disqualification and the court clerks are refusing to file the document. So let's talk about what the document shows. The document shows that for 30 years, Judge Towery, first as a lawyer and now as a judge, attended these secret meetings called the Bar Bench Media Police Committee meetings. And the meetings were not noticed to the public and I did a video about this and whether I did it very well or not, I don't know, you guys can tell me. It has about 500,000 views. I read all your comments and I appreciate your feedback. But Judge Towery sat on this committee and he had off-record discussions with police officers including the Santa Clara County Sheriff's deputies. 
and he had them with reporters. And he had them with only mainly three media outlets. The San Jose Metro, which is... Okay. You got, can you guys hear me now? I, I got a phone call. I got a, this is getting quite dicey. Okay. Can you guys hear? All right. Let's go over this. We're back at the courthouse, up on the seventh floor. Judge James Towery first refused service yesterday. He got drop served a disqualification because he has been the chairperson of a secret bench bar media police committee. And for over 30 years, members of the sheriffs and San Jose Police Department met in secret with judges, lawyers, police officers, and reporters. Reporters mostly from the San Jose Mercury and the Metro News. That's this paper right here. They also met with NBC News, but no other reporters were invited. Not all police officers were invited. Not all judges were invited. Well, I think all judges were invited, but not all lawyers were invited. And they had three meetings a year, five meetings a year for three hours each time. And we know this from the public records that we got. And so those public records show there was never a public notice of these meetings. They show that the judges had off record meetings with prosecutors, witnesses who were police officers, and they invited federal judges who police officers often are before as litigants when they violate people's rights. So let me go over what these records show in the Bar Bench Media Committee and why a judge in this $283 million courthouse would refuse to accept service. And think about that for a minute, people. Lawsuits can only be started when you file them and serve them. We get served with papers all the time and you have a legal obligation to respond. And if you don't, you default. Judge Towery didn't want to be served today because he doesn't want to talk about the secret committee that he's been going to since 1989. And when he was a judge, he influenced, he influenced legal outcomes, elections, and news headlines because he had secret meetings with reporters for three hours, five times a year, and we don't know what they said. We don't know what they decided would be published in the San Jose Mercury News or in the Metro. And Judge Patricia Lucas, who was once the presiding judge of this courthouse, presiding judges get paid extra money and they tell what you can do inside the courthouse. They make little administrative rules and they're in charge of keeping all the judges in line. And one year, Judge Patricia Lucas was the presiding judge and she was attending these bench bar media police meetings and she started issuing these orders. And this order right here is the order that she has had me prosecuted for, for six years, for taking a photograph of somebody serving a disqualification and of the sheriff who broke my hand. That's her order right there. She just wrote it on that piece of paper and that has resulted in my prosecution, 71 hearings for taking a photograph inside that courthouse. The other thing she did is she wrote another order, which might be this one down here. And that order, yep, that one is re-signed. It was first signed in 2017. And it said that you weren't allowed to photograph outside of this courthouse. It also says that you're not allowed to leaflet. But when I pulled up today, I noticed these two news racks sitting right here where everybody walks into them. They weren't empty earlier. There were about three or four papers left in them. But the fact is, is that newspapers are like leafleting. They're protected by the First Amendment and we have a right to pick them up, but they disseminate information to the public. And they stuck these two news racks right here. Now the problem is, is that for 30 years, they've been deciding which media will sit with the judges for five hours, three hours, five times a week. And when they were deciding that, 
they were deciding the headlines that you would read, the information that jurors would get, the information that voters Okay, I'm back. Can you guys hear me? I keep getting phone calls. I got an update. You ready for this one? The judge actually told the bailiff to tell the process server if he comes back, he's to be arrested. So a process server doing his job, serving court documents peacefully in a courthouse with security and cameras that they all control have just ordered a court clerk not to do her job, ordered he's obstructing justice. He's ordered that it not be filed and it's his disqualification. And the process server was threatened with being arrested if he continued to wait for the filed stamp copies of this disqualification. So what these judges are doing is they, for 30 years in Santa Clara County, and we don't find this was going on in any other county, they were meeting with reporters, they were meeting with, pros with police officers, they were meeting with lawyers, prosecutors, mostly people from the DA's office, and they were deciding what we would see and what we would hear in the local press. And they only were invited reporters from the San Jose Mercury, Metro News, and NBC in recent years. And that means that they had a scoop on information, they had an ability to kill stories, they had an ability to promote things for trials, and that's what we call trying cases in the media. And they did this with traditional news outlets for 30 years. And what's changing the game on this, you guys, is you. Because now with social media, when I have a judge not accepting service and I'm out on the street asking people what they think, here's the process server. Uh, you're live on YouTube. I will do it tomorrow morning. Well, we'll get him in a second. Okay, bye. Okay, do you do you mind being live on YouTube? Oh yeah, why not? Okay, this is this is Adam. Hi, Adam. My royal wife. He's oh. Can you all see Adam and hear Adam? Oh, you can see me. I'm sorry. Okay, so Adam, why don't you tell us first about what it was like to serve Judge Towery earlier? I was surprised I caught him in the hallway. That's the first thing. And tell us what you said. Oh wait, I got him. Okay, oh. sorry. Okay, so Adam's going to tell us about what it was like. To I served serve him a and judge. did this. Uh, I was trying to. I was in the uh, the court four times yesterday and twice a day, and the bailiff told me in no certain terms to come back a third time. I'm going out, not that door, that door. So basically, I was threatened with being uh, being arrested or being in contempt. Process server, license PS one seven one seven, filing the work. So uh, yeah, I was outside. He was in the hallway, but I was he was. I tried to do it four times yesterday. The runaround was here. Was it him? It has to be filed here. It's not that. She can't. Carlo Jack said she could or could not sign for it. it just basically um, very Kafka esque, for lack of a better or uh, uh, fast way of putting it, as, as that. Then they said it's not in her department, even though his he's mentioned and he's on the paperwork. So it said Department 77, go to 79, which it did. In fact, that judge is named in the paper as well. She refused, no problem. Came back, um, then back again. Uh, this morning, uh, he, I would just give another runaround. No problem. Okay. I had left. Adam, I go, had, go then back I left. to what it was like at the elevator. And then, then, then when him. I left, I went to the elevator. You saw him at the elevator. I, and what I, did you say? I was had I was had everything like this, uh, my paperwork in my box, and I realized it was, it was obviously Judge Reed because I was there literally four times okay, yesterday. You confirmed it was Judge. You confirmed this. Uh, so your honor said uh some process services and it says i've i've served says i don't accept this look and i said exactly says, look i'm just I'm, I'm i'm just doing my work i'm a process server and i said look i'm a vet i i i, res I, I respect you i can the drop server hand to you or either hand it to you or then not and then he accepted that and he took it and he turned around and went back to the chambers and that was it so he has accepted service, but refused to and file. The, but the only but before they put in there, I was in back in the courthouse again. This is court this morning, waiting for this, to, uh, this or this afternoon to get the. Uh, I was there earlier. He was not in chambers. They're waiting for uh, one other lawyer to arrive, which he did not. The judge came back in. And I was looking down at my notes, and then I heard the bailiff bond his name is uh, said. Uh, everyone remained. I remained seated. Looked up. And the first thing the judge says, uh, uh, Carla was before that. Um, I said, I'm just trying to get filed. This is 
whatever, just uh, be like he makes it just know this is gonna be filed or just have to do your, uh, just have to wait. And then that's what he said, then Judge uh, Terry came back. The first thing he said is there's a process server in the back row. We just belong here and kicked me out. I waited about half an hour, made some calls to you, to, to Kimberly. Uh, I tried to make one last attempt and that's what the, uh, the bailiff said. And then he basically kicked me out and says, you have two choices. You can either go out this one, come back in, you can go out this door or that door. And that was it. So I'm he done. kicked you out of a public proceeding. Twice. He identified you as a process. He identified me as a process. And he had you removed and from the courtroom. Knows, right. And the documents did not get filed. They are still with me as we speak. He wouldn't accept them. The clerk, the clerk, that was the clerk's job to accept yes. them. The clerk did not accept them and would not file them. Nope. Okay, I'm gonna do a little roundup there and then we're gonna go. No worries. So I just wanna clear that you guys understand what's going on. A judge who solely exists by procedure and law has refused to accept service. He got caught by the elevator and got served. So he's been served. He's now obstructing justice by refusing to have his clerk file the document which starts the process against him. And the process against him talks about how for 30 years, these judges, these sheriff's deputies, police officers from the San Jose Police Department and select reporters from the San Jose Mercury News, from NBC and from the Metro literally met in secret five times a year and they decided what would appear in the local news. They decided what cases would be talked about and how they would be talked about. They decided what lawyers would get comments, and that resulted in deciding who would win cases and who would lose them. It resulted in jurors being affected by what they read, and as far as the order to not distribute leafleting materials here that the court thinks they have a right to do, which they don't, it's completely unconstitutional to tell people they can't leaflet, if it wasn't, there wouldn't be able to be newspapers here, which has a stand. And you can see is littering the courthouse area. So they're not only ma not maintaining the $283 million courthouse taxpayers paid for, they can't staff it properly. The staff inside is not following the law and the judges are not following the law and they're obstructing justice. That's what judges in Santa Clara County, the heart of Silicon Valley, are doing in your $283 million courthouse. And there's your sheriff's deputies who have the contract to protect the courthouse. And those sheriff's deputies today kicked a member of the public and a process server trying to do his job out of Judge Towery's courtroom. And I went live on this because you all taught me that in the middle of the day, we can turn on our cameras and we can get some help from the public. And all of you are watching this and all of you are witness to that this just occurred. That a judge has refused service, then was surprise served with a drop serve at the elevator and has ordered his court clerk to not serve the disqualification for him and has also ordered his bailiff to arrest a process server for trying to get the filed documents. That's what justice in Santa Clara County looks like in the $283 million courthouse. So thanks guys, all 180, 138 of you who came on to watch this live. I don't have my hair and makeup done, but I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you listening as we uncover and investigate this Bar Bench Media Police Committee and Judge Chow Towery's chairmanship of it and the impact that it had on our court proceedings, our newspapers, and on our elections. There's the sheriffs, I'm waving to them. Let's see if we can get anybody to wave. Nope, I got no waivers. I had one earlier when he saw me filming him out on the street. So that's the Santa Clara County Sheriff's. And we are now leaving the courthouse at its two days of trying to get a judge served and the order filed and we couldn't do it. They are not letting us. So thanks to Adam, thanks to all of you guys for being here why I documented that.